ओके सो टुडे वी विल रिवाइज कंप्लीट हिस्ट्री हिस्ट्री इज डिवाइडेड इनटू एंशिएंट हिस्ट्री मेडिवल हिस्ट्री एंड मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री ओके सो हियर देयर इज वन मोर सेक्शन दैट इज वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री इज नॉट फॉर स्टूडेंट दोस आर राइटिंग एफकेट ग्रुप एक्स ग्रुप वाई ओके सोल्जर जनरल ड्यूटी इट इज नॉट फॉर देम बट इट इज नॉट इवन फॉर कंबाइंड डिफेंस सर्विस इट इज नॉट देयर मे बी वन और टू क्वेश्चन दे मे आस्क यू बट डेफिनेटली दे विल बी आस्किंग यू फॉर द एनडीए एग्जामिनेशन ओके बिकॉज इन एनडीए एग्जामिनेशन इन टेंथ स्टैंडर्ड यू हैव दिस वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री एंड इन वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री यू हैव द फर्स्ट वन द अमेरिकन रिवोल्यूशन then french revolution then russian revolution world war 1 world war 2 industrial revolution cold war okay so this is your world history okay today our idea is only this part ancient medieval modern okay let us see how far we can go and cover these topics uh, in today's session fine so in ancient history we will divide it as paleolithic mesolithic chalcolithic paleo paleo means old okay paleolithic lithic means rock always history is studied with the based on the rocks because the humans they had used some tools okay some tools or weapons some tools or weapons which was made up of rocks slowly it was initially it was a blunt it was a blunt tool then they started sharpening it and the technology started uh, developing and they started applying their mind slowly the metal started coming up okay all these things are there okay now in your examination not much questions are asked in this paleolithic mesolithic chalcolithic uh, it is not like a upsc civil service examination question where they may give you an india map and they may spot a, a place here imagine this is a and they will give you a question uh, this place a belongs to the metallic age okay so tell us Uh, some importance about this so you need to write the place what it is okay then you need to talk about that its significance all these things are there got it so here first in ancient history we will talk about the indus valley civilization and then we will talk about the uh, alexander invasion and we will keep talking about the uh, chandragupta maurya and all those people's uh, contribution in our ancient history then medieval history will talk about Uh, the contribution of the muslim invasions okay what uh, alauddin khilji did all these people will be watching it in detail just a minute there is some issue okay first thing we'll start directly with the indus valley civilization indus valley civilization okay indus valley civilization here you need to remember some person's name first is sir john marshall sir john marshall was the person who discovered this indus valley civilization okay he was a person who gave an idea that there is some old settlement here before this the world was believing in a settlement called as mesopotamia mesopotamia is considered as the world's oldest civilization this could be a gk question world's oldest civilization is mesopotamia and it was between two rivers that is tigris and euphrates okay tigris and euphrates between these two rivers we had the settlement this is in iran now in 1920s in 1920s what happened sir john marshall he discovered this place indus valley civilization with the help of the archaeological survey of india archaeological survey of india okay and this archaeological survey of india was started by sir alexander cunningham sir alexander cunningham he started this archaeological survey of india so they may ask you a question gk question who was the founder of the archaeological survey of india 
answer is sir alexander cunningham and who discovered this indus valley civilization the pioneer sir john marshall now there is another place in harappa civilization that is indus valley civilization harappa mohenjodaro okay there are many places so harappa was discovered by dayaram sahani okay harappa was discovered by dayaram sahani then mohenjodaro mohenjodaro was discovered by r d banerjee okay r d banerjee so these two places these two names you have to keep in mind for our afcat examination okay don't go much in detail about lothal okay there is a long list there is a long list for different places and different persons have discovered it fine so now what happened this indus valley civilization first it was believed that it is only in few places okay it was believed that it is only in few places so here this place okay here there is a river from lake manasarovar a river is going from back this is the singhi kambam river correct singhi kambam other name is indus okay indus so this was the river and here there was a settlement and this dot here this is a place called as harappa okay harappa then here this is an another place called as mohenjodaro okay mohenjodaro so people thought that only these two places they have a settlement they used to do trade etc etc and uh, this uh, this place was like buried okay imagine this is the mound okay and this was buried so when sir john marshall he started digging this place with the archaeological sites when he digging this place near about 78 feet down he discovered that it this was submerged under a uh, heap of uh, mud okay so this is what has happened slowly people in uh, different parts of india when they started discovering it here in gujarat they got a place called as lothal okay then they got a place called as dolavariya okay dolavariya so dolavariya and lothal these are in the state of gujarat and it is very famous port okay it is very famous port then in rajasthan they got a place called as kalibangan okay kalibangan then in haryana they got surkodath okay like this there are many places so if you see the distance okay it is far far away okay it is like many many kilometers away these places were uh, were got you know by the archaeologist and they found that the trade was between these two places there was a particular system followed by them they had a beautiful currency system okay they had currency system they had a written script etc so this is what has happened with the indus valley civilization keeping in mind our examination like afcat or small examination we need to remember just three to four points the places here okay dolavari and lothal is found in gujarat harappa and mohenjodaro it is now in the pakistani side in sindh province kalibangan is in rajasthan surkodath in haryana okay that's it enough and the three names which i gave sir john marshall dayaram sahani and rd banerjee and the places related to them in upsc nda and cds preparation we will be watching in detail okay what are the contribution what about the religion what about the god what about the language etc okay art and culture will try to go in detail in the upcoming classes fine so this is what happens with the indus valley civilization next you have a very important thing alexander invasion okay alexander invasion okay alexander invasion so again here there is a river that is indus and here alexander wanted to capture the whole world so imagine if this is the globe okay imagine if this is the globe and here there is europe and this is asia alexander started coming towards east and he wanted to come, come uh, capture the whole of asia so when he was coming here he was crossing this indus river so he came with the first battle the first face off when he came to india was with a king called as ambi but ambi looking at the strength of the european forces or the alexander forces he surrendered so ambi surrendered next alexander was confident enough to capture india also so he is now campaigning near the river jhelum okay near the river jhelum but on the banks of river jhelum here there was a strong king his name is king porus 
so now alexander kings uh, bat, you know alexander battalion is here on the left bank of the river jhelum and indian king porus is on the right bank of river jhelum after few days there was a decisive battle in which porus was defeated okay and this battle is called as battle of hydipsis this battle is called as battle of hydipsis your afcat question previous question they have asked which battle took place between alexander and porus the answer is hydipsis okay so this is what has happened but according to this deal alexander he gave back the whole territory to porus and he goes back to his kingdom again and there are many reasons what are the reasons that is not require for afcat examination okay but for upsc examination they may ask you nda and cds they may ask you what are the following reasons which among the following reasons are responsible for the alexander to go back to his kingdom again the army was fatigued and uh, the army was afraid and there was a little military coup inside it inside the army itself and uh, the, uh, many reasons are there okay so this is not for afcat this is for nda and cds this is what has happened now when alexander is going back he is appointing a minister that is seleucus nicator okay seleucus nicator so this is important this is what the your examination question will be which whom did whom did alexander appointed as a governor of this sindh province or this afghanistan area that is seleucus nicator coming to another important questions the question could be like this when alexander was having a battle of uh, hydipsis with uh, porus who was who was ruling this north india okay who was ruling this north india so there was a dynasty called as nanda dynasty so nanda dynasty was ruling the northern india and now the next question comes here who is the founder of nanda dynasty answer is maha padma nanda okay maha padma nanda is the founder of nanda dynasty but here there could be a specific question direct question who was the nanda dynasty ruler or who was the nanda dynasty king when alexander was having battle of hydipsis with porus answer is dhana nanda answer is dhana nanda okay so these are the few things that you need to keep in mind so nanda dynasty maha padma nanda dhana nanda okay now before nanda dynasty you you need to keep in mind that there were some other dynasties also okay uh, magda empire was there shishunaga empire was there okay all this haranyaka dynasty was there so all these things are there now when it comes to your afcat examination keep one thing in mind if they are going to ask questions on ancient history there are many dynasties okay there are many dynasties favorite question is who is the founder of particular dynasty they may ask you founder of the uh, mauryan empire gupta empire etc okay so we'll see these things in detail today fine we have heard lot of stories what exactly happened with them all these things we have seen but today we'll see what is happening in the uh, who is the founder that's it very very important next we have just completed indus valley civilization at the same time vedic culture okay vedic literature goes hand in hand okay vedic literature or vedic time goes hand in hand now what has happened in history there is confusion whether vedic time was before indus valley civilization or indus valley civilization was before vedic uh, literature this is a confusion so we'll have to take it as like okay both happened hand in hand and these people they migrated we don't know what happened to this indus valley people so they, uh, this is how the historians are taking everything into history now coming to this vedic literature the sanskrit language was spoken by this vedic literature people and they gave lot of importance to the nature okay they gave lot of importance to nature they considered everything as god for example the sky as god the air the water the fire okay okay like this there is lot of things happening here the first thing is vedas there are totally how many vedas four vedas that is rigveda samaveda Atharva Veda and Yajur Veda. Okay. Yes. Like uh, during this time of period, like hmm. you said you mentioned like Sanskrit was in use. Hmm. Then people still call the Tamil the oldest language in the world. Right? So yeah. How old is it? I'll, I'll explain this. Okay. Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Atharva Veda, and Yajur Veda. These are the four Vedas. Rig Veda is the oldest Veda. Okay. Initially, when this AFCAT, you know, they used to conduct an exam. 
So the question was very easy. Which is the oldest Veda? Rig Veda. But today you can't expect this kind of question. You just need to remember Rig. There are four Vedas. They may ask you one more question. Which Veda? Which book? Okay. Which book is also considered as the fifth Veda? Okay. Which book is also considered as the fifth Veda? That is Tiru Kural. Okay. Tiru Kural written by Tiru Valluvar. Okay. Tiru Valluvar. Okay. Fine. So now here the question is, there is a doubt. Sanskrit here it was spoken during Vedic time. But still the people they believe that Tamil is oldest. Compared to Sanskrit it is oldest. Okay. Now let us try to understand this. Now what has happened? Imagine this is Indian Peninsula. This is Gujarat. Okay. And just a minute. Okay. This is Gujarat. And this is Jammu and Kashmir here. Okay. And down this is India. Got it? Fine. This is Tropic of Cancer. So whatever the Vedic things happened. Okay. Whether Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Yajur Veda, Mahabharat, Ramayana, Upanishad, Brahmanas, Aryanakas. Okay. Everything. Whatever has happened, it happened only here. Did you understand? It happened only in North. Okay. So only here, people, they used to speak Sanskrit. So if I write like this. Okay. This is a script. Okay, this is a script, Devanagiri script. Suppose if I ask you, tell me which language I am writing here? Hindi. This is Sanskrit. Understood? Uh, this is Sanskrit. Rushi. This is Rushi. Okay, then we have Kshatriya. We write like this. Ksha. Okay, this is Tra. Now what has happened? If you take Hindi language, the mother is Sanskrit language. You understood? The mother is what language here? Sanskrit language. Okay, see now imagine for example, I'll tell you one more uh, fact here. Uh, matru means what? Matru. Hmm, matru means kya? Mother. Okay. In Tamil, we call uh, we call mother and what? Uh, like how we call it? Amma. Okay. Amma. Got it? In English, we call how? Mom, it, see, mom is something that you have created. Okay, all this, you know, uh, the cinema stars have created. Don't ever, even in interview, don't say that. Suppose of, uh, officer is asking you, tell me whom do you like in your family? Okay, which uh, among your parents, whom do you like? Don't say mom. The moment you say mom, you are rejected. Understood? Fine. See now, matru. Okay, mother. Matru. This matru word has changed into mother. All the European languages, okay, maximum of all the European languages, it has the roots in Sanskrit language. Okay, it has the root in which language? Mm -hmm. Sanskrit. French language. If you try to speak French, go to France, Italy, you may see lot of Sanskrit words are there in their language. Okay, so now what has happened? This IE, uh, this what I am writing is Sanskrit. But Hindi has born, okay, after Sanskrit, Hindi was born and they have taken this script. Now, you know that when uh, there was a Kurukshetra battle here, everything was happening here. What was happening down south? This is the question. Did the people, they came from Mars and directly settled in Tamil Nadu? No, right? So, something was going on down south. So, before Sanskrit, before there was anyone who was able, who was writing Ramayana and Mahabharata, there was a guy here called as Thiru Alluvar. He was writing Tirukural. You understood? Okay, here down south already the literature, the language was flourishing. So that's the reason this language here spoken in the Tamil land, okay, it is considered as the oldest language. And they have the proof also. If you take the book, Tirukural book, it does not mention any god like Krishna or Shiva. What does it mean? Before Vedic literature, only in Vedic literature they have god mentions like Krishna, Shiva, etc, etc. So, if Tiruvalluvar is writing a book and in this book the, there is no mention of Krishna and Shiva, what does it mean? This book is written before Vedic. Understood? So, there are lot of proofs. You can go inside it, but this is out of the purview of our examination. But it will come and discuss this for the UPSC examination, ND and CDS. And one more thing, today this is our Indian Peninsula. This is Kanyakumari, okay, like that. What has happened uh, thousands of years ago, this is India, like this. Okay, and this is like this, imagine, this is today's Tamil Nadu. So, this complete thing was land here. Okay, the outer was land. 
but the water started coming in okay the sea water started coming in it started raising the ice in the poles in the north pole and the south pole it started melting and this land was called as lemur okay the land of lemur lemur is an animal in madagascar okay lemur, lemur is an animal in madagascar so this is called as lemuria continent okay in tamil we say called we call it as lemuria gandam okay so what has happened the water started coming in and it got submerged and today we have only this part remaining this is tamil nadu like that got it fine so what the uh, what the people down there in tamil nadu they say that when this land goes submerged under this water lot of books okay lot of rich resources of tamil language also got submerged okay also got submerged after this only they have sri lanka and ramayana did you understand okay after this land got sink then only rama came here he built a bridge and he started going here so now if you go and check the tamil literature the whole you see ayodhya people are building temple correct now rama was able to save his wife sita okay after coming to which state even if yeah just a small common sense question that you know indian geography this is tamil nadu state correct no and this is sri lanka did he go to goa and take a route then he should have come to which state tamil nadu correct but if you go and check in tamil literature there is not much mention of rama as a god there is not much literature talking rama is you know he came to madurai he had you know parotta tea coffee he doesn't we don't have anything like that okay we don't have much so that is what it is so this is a confusion whether uh, tamil literature came first sanskrit literature came first but there are enough proof that tamil literature is con- we can prove that it is oldest you got the point here okay so today what has happened there was a language called as tamil then slowly it started getting divided here there is a mountain some people they were speaking tamil okay they crossed this mountain and they got settled down here in western ghats and now the way they speak the way they uh, do the traditions they all it's all started changing and slowly this language changed to malayalam okay now people down here okay in karnataka they also started changing this language and it become kannada then it become telugu okay like this so down south in dravidian dravidian means four states kerala tamil nadu andhra and karnataka this four states okay now to get, now what has happened the language they are speaking different language you got the point here now okay so this is vedic literature the first question here they may ask you how many vedas are there rig veda is the oldest veda and everything was written in which language sanskrit. it was written in sanskrit language okay now next you have some other book, uh, books called as brahmanas okay brahmanas is also a book then upanishad okay upanishad upanishad is something that you have upa upa means sit okay and nishad means listen you have to sit and listen so what used to happen in those olden days gurukul system the teacher used to sit uh, and he used to deliver the lecture and the students used to listen it and they used to by heart it so that is what is called as upanishad now here there is a very important upanishad called as mundaka upanishad okay mundaka upanishad this mundaka upanishad here we have a very famous a word or quote taken as india's motto okay india's motto that is satya meva jayate satya meva jayate what is the meaning of satya meva jayate truth always triumphs truth always triumphs you got it okay so this is taken from mundaka upanishad now the question comes who gave this idea that is pandit madan mohan malviya pandit madan mohan malviya okay so these are the expected afcat kind of questions satyameva jayate is taken from which upanishad answer is mundaka upanishad who gave the idea pandit madan mohan malviya now slightly if you go towards upsc the questions they will ask you that who started banaras hindu university pandit. and did and answer is pandit madan mohan malviya okay this will come up in upsc sections got it so upanishad did you understand yes. next you have something called as arannyakas okay arannyakas aranya means forest okay aranya means forest 
okay and these are the story told in forest and there are these are all moral stories fine so now after this after vedic literature now what happened there was complete silence okay there was complete silence we don't know whether vedic was first or whether indus was first okay what has happened here slowly this was little little settlement here okay there were smaller smaller settlements here imagine smaller kingdoms and this smaller kingdoms are together called as maha janapadas these are called as what maha janapadas so there were 16 maha janapadas according to buddhist literature according to buddhist literature there were how many maha janapadas 16 maha janapadas understood and now you can take it down which buddhist book talks about the 16 maha janapadas answer is angutara nikaya take it down angutara nikaya and i k a y a this was written by sutta pitaka this is a buddhist book okay mahavastu they may ask you this mahavastu buddhist and bhagavati sutta bhagavati bhagavati sutta this is a jainist book mahavastu is also buddhist book sir or like it also which one mahavastu yeah mahavastu this is they are the buddhist contributors they have written a book in buddhist literature i'll come to that okay you we'll just take it down bhagavati sutta it is a jain literature literature book this much in detail they don't ask but still okay just uh, we, we have to be you know careful they may ask so angutara nikaya is a book by sutta Pit, uh, sutta pitaka it is a, sutta pitaka is kind of three uh, division adidama pitaka sutta pitaka and vinaya pitaka so inside sutta pitaka mahavastu has written this book okay so why i am telling you this because these are the sources okay got it now slowly what happened each kingdom is fighting with one another okay each kingdom is fighting with one another and slowly there is a kingdom called as magda kingdom okay magda empire so this is how these kingdoms are coming up into picture now now the first question very very important for afcat who is the founder of magda empire who is the founder of magda empire write down jarasandha jarasandha and brihadratha briha brihadratha they are the founder of magda empire okay so magda empire hope you are understanding what i am telling here there were 16 maha janapadas what is in by 16 maha janapadas 16 small small kingdoms you know like they are been located like this in northern india okay and now they are all fighting with one another and finally who is the victorious here magda empire and who was the founder here jarasandha and brihadratha now after Bri- magda empire there is one more dynasty called as haranyaka dynasty take it down very very important expected questions in your examination haranyaka dynasty now who is the founder of haranyaka dynasty bimbisara bimbisara is the founder of haranyaka dynasty bimbisara after bimbisara there was another king called as ajata shatru ajata shatru and you have udayin udayin these are the three important king in haranyaka dynasty haranyaka dynasty after haranyaka dynasty you have shishunag shishunag dynasty shishunag dynasty and the founder is the person shishunag himself the founder is shishunag himself okay and here kalasok kalasok is a very famous king in shishunaga dynasty after shishunaga dynasty there is one more dynasty called as nanda dynasty nanda dynasty and who is the founder of nanda dynasty yeah 
okay so till today i think you are attending classes from past 6 months and i have told you this and it is in your mind but now keeping in mind of afcat examination how the questions are framed in afcat examination which kingdom was first ruled by or started by a non kshatriya what is that non kshatriya now what is this non kshatriya from where this has come in during vedic time there was class system or we call it as varna system okay varna system brahmanas kshatriyas vaishyas and shudras brahmanas kshatriyas vaishyas and shudras every time if you see you know in the history whether it is magdha empire or if you see the haranyaka dynasty or shishunaga dynasty it was ruled by whom brahmanas or it was ruled by whom kshatriyas but for the first time non kshatriya okay they are not kshatriyas but non kshatriyas they are nanda okay go and check afcat previous year question papers they have asked this question for the first time who was the non kshatriya ruler understood so what is the answer here nanda dynasty nanda dynasty you got it so you already know mahapadma nanda dhananda you can write it and after that after this nanda dynasty you have mauryan empire correct mauryan empire so who is the founder of mauryan empire here chandragupta maurya okay take down mauryan empire mauryan empire was started by chandragupta maurya maurya now there are confusion gupta gupta see this is chandragupta maurya okay chandragupta maurya he started mauryan empire now afcat may ask you one more question which king is called as sandro sandro cotus write down it is chandragupta maurya this i haven't deal in any history classes sandro cotus they will ask you the nicknames this is a greek word okay see actually uh, suppose if i say what is this tell loudly madam, madam. madam. okay so this word it is not madam it is madame okay so we don't know how to spell it okay we don't know how to spell it so imagine uh, simran you will tell me what is this word yeah if i go in north and if i ask them to read azabuza <laughs> correct what they will read <laughs> azabuza correct but how to read this word tell me aalapula <laughs> okay if i am tamil i'll be here aalapula and if i go with malayalam la vaalai okay they'll start a new story okay it is not la 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 they'll fight for this la okay so this is something language now if i go in greek imagine those days when there was no google no translation if i go and tell them chandragupta chandragupta they cannot uh, spell that word they cannot pronounce it properly so chandra become sandra sandro okay so chandragupta sandra kotas okay they told like this you got the point here now okay so chandragupta maurya but afcat we they don't know what is this they are just going to ask a question for you okay ready so this is what is happening now nanda dynasty okay are you getting the point here now everyone okay a small recap what has happened till now indus valley civilization then we have seen what vedic literature and then we have seen what mahajanapadas okay now this is very important the tree which i am drawing this is very important mahajanapadas okay so in mahajanapadas who was victorious first which was the first kingdom magdha kingdom magdha kingdom correct who was the founder of magdha kingdom jb just remember jb justin bieber okay like this jb okay next after magdha empire who was that haranyakas correct haranyakas who was the founder of haranyakas bimbisara ajata shatru udayin correct after haranyakas who was the ruler shishunaga who was the 
which dynasty was that shishunaga and who was the founder shishunaga after shishunaga who was what dynasty started nanda dynasty who is the founder mahapadmananda did you understand okay just a minute now during this rule only during this nanda dynasty only which foreign uh, king is coming and attacking india alexander. alexander so alexander is having a battle of edipsis which which king porus did you understand okay so till now we have seen this now after nanda dynasty which empire is going to start mauryan empire okay out after mauryan empire now there will be a new empire called as kushanas okay there will be something called as kushanas and after kushanas there will be a dynasty called as sunga dynasty which dynasty here sunga dynasty and after sunga there will be a dynasty called as kanwa dynasty and after kanwa dynasty you have satavanas okay etc etc but will directly go to gupta okay but will directly go to gupta now here gupta was an very famous uh, empire here or a dynasty where there is lot of contribution in the art, uh, culture art and culture you got the point here yes what is your doubt now tell me sir before the mention of uh, alexander towards india mm -hmm. was there no any other foreign uh, king who invaded india till now in history we don't know maybe there is if you search if we get it maybe there is okay but the major invasion was by alexander okay he has come via khyber pass okay he came india uh, via khyber pass imagine in those days you know the harsh climatic condition he has come yeah but historians some historians tell that the hmm. porus had like uh, elephant uh, hmm. thing so hmm. alexander could not invade but uh, to cover that part uh, is a uh, loyal uh, those who write the book of uh, is like sorry sir yeah, yeah. so they have mentioned that to cover his part uh, like uh, we alexander won the battle but still he gave it back so like the question is he came to conquer mm. the entire world mm. then why he has to give it back yeah i understood see now there is a race running race okay there is a running race and i came second in that i came what second, second. should i be proud or should i be sad Proud yeah. Least, uh, I came second. Think, I came second. I'm, I'm, I'm saying like this. I came second. Uh, this is my achievement. I came second. I, do, I don't bother who is first. I came second. Now my friend is asking, okay, Arun, you came second. Congratulations. But how many people ran this race? I told only two people ran. <laughs> What I am telling? Only, only two people ran. Now you tell me, should I be sad? Yeah, yes, because I am last. Okay, but. i will justify myself no 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 i am second have you understood so when you are an indian when you are going to write a history book what you will do you will try to glorify indians correct you will try to glorify indian kings so this is what just one thing you keep in mind exaggerations will be there exaggeration in history is very common you know what has happened in uh, chola kingdom elephant was uh, their you know animal here favorite war horse elephant and they used to build ships so what what one historian has written from tamil nadu a historian from tamil he is written in tamil history that the chola people they build one ship in which 10000 elephants were traveling how much 10000 and from where from tamil nadu to thailand okay so do you believe in this now it's not possible right so yeah maybe 10 elephants it could be maybe he is counting mistake he is counting the same elephant round and round again you know and the counter money uh, sendil joke irukla vandi ketna wheel you know na ala etta you know and the mari it can happen so this is history just take it as you know whatever is we want okay fine so coming to this we were into nanda dynasty here there was a ruler called as dhananda so what happened during the rule of dhananda there was a brahmin and he wanted to give a, you know a, a dedicate a poem to this dhananda but this brahmin was insulted and now this brahmin he is kautilya or he is chanakya okay chanakya so this chanakya when he was in, insulted he gave a challenge that within 6 months this nanda dynasty will be overthrown he goes and joins hands with the enemy king or the next ruler that is chandragupta maurya okay chandragupta maurya so now according to this Ch kautilya or chanakya chandragupta maurya is doing all the actions and slowly he becomes the emperor of the northern india complete north india is under his control and nanda dynasty was defeated 
ओके नाउ द क्वेश्चन फॉर योर एग्जामिनेशन विच बुक कौतल्य और चाणक्य हैज रिटर्न आंसर इज अर्थशास्त्र ओके आंसर इज अर्थशास्त्र फाइन नाउ चंद्रगुप्त मौर्य हैज आल्सो डिफीटेड सेल्युकस निकेटर ओके देन देयर इज वन मोर किंग कॉल्ड एज डेरियस निकेटर ओके ही दे वेयर ऑल द गवर्नर अपॉइंटेड बाय द अलेक्जेंडर द ग्रीक द ग्रीक गवर्नर सो चंद्रगुप्त मौर्य ही मैरिज द डॉटर ऑफ डेरियस निकेटर एंड कंप्लीट द एरिया ऑफ अफगानिस्तान एंड पाकिस्तान इज गिवन एज डौरी to this chandragupta maurya like this he is doing here in the northern india now what happens down south though uh, this all this nanda okay this maurya drama is going on in the north down south there were three brothers okay that is chera then you have chola and then you have pandyas chera cholas and pandyas these three used to fight among themselves they will always fight among themselves but the moment they realize that if there is a foreign king coming they will unite and they will attack this person okay so this used to go on so here what happens now there is a cultural change one day what happened chandragupta maurya wanted to stop his uh, you know he was see, uh, tired of being a king so he decided that i want peace i want peace of mind i want to be happy so he is deciding to uh, search for something which will give him peace so that time there was a person called as badrabahu okay badra bahu he comes to his court and he says that if you change your religion to jainism you will have complete bliss complete happiness complete peace etc so this is the turning point where chandragupta maurya decided to turn into jainism with the uh, instruction of badra bahu so what happens now from north he is coming down south in near bangalore in a place called as shravana belagola shravana bela gola and here there is a statue of gomateshwar okay gomateshwar bahubali okay bahubali statue which is 60 feet now suppose if i ask you which is the tallest monolithic statue in india okay very very important very uh, you know risky question here tallest monolithic okay tallest monolithic statue of india it is bahubali in shravana belagola gomateshwar in karnataka understood and this is dedicated to jains okay this is a jain jain uh, uh, religion okay so when this has happened when some followers they came down south here with badrabahu and chandragupta maurya they were termed as digambaras they were ter termed as what digambaras and some people they stayed in north some people they stayed in north under the leadership of stula badra under the leadership of stula badra so this stula badra supporters are called as shvetambaras shvetambaras okay so this has what happened in jainism so let me give you a small glimpse of jainism jainism was started by the first tirthankar that is rishab i have got question who is the first tirthankar or who is the who is the founder of jainism religion answer is rishab okay 24th who was the last uh, tirthankar on this earth that is mahavir okay that is mahavir now mahavir father and mother mahavir father is siddhartha okay and mother is trishala mother is trishala and wife is yashoda wife is yashoda okay so mahavir he was the person who revolution revolutionized this jainism religion and after this in india what happens jainism got divided into two shvetambaras okay shvetambaras and then you have digambaras shvetambaras and digambaras digambaras you know the follower of chandragupta maurya and badrabahu shvetambaras you know uh, follower of stula badra okay so this has what this is what has happened next mahavir used which language mahavir used prakrit language so whatever is written on the screen is very very important expected questions for 3 marks in afcat okay yeah like how buddhism got divided the first concept got mm -hmm. how did, is there any counseling no here there, there, there is the till today there is only this two major division in jainism okay there is no more council or nothing uh, no king after chandragupta maurya there was no king who took jainism seriously that was buddhism okay there was no indian king who took jainism and he, he wanted to make jainism as the kingdom's religion okay and there is a reason behind it see suppose if i say that uh, you know i am going to give you one food 
and if you eat that food you will die okay will you eat no so this is what it is jainism say that you have to uh, practice uh, you know pines that means you have to practice meditation in such a way that while doing meditation you will pass away so people were afraid this was an extreme end extreme end you want peace but not in this cost okay so this is what has happened jainism and still some important see language they will ask you the first uh, founder of jainism and the 24th and what happened under chandragupta maurya understood okay so this is what has happened so mauryan dynasty c stands for chandragupta maurya now we will see b that is bindusara okay bindusara was the next king see here there will be a confusion in history between bimbisara okay bimbisara and bindusara remember bimbi is from haranyaka dynasty okay and bindu is from bindu mauryan dynasty so after b you have a that is ashoka okay after a you have a uh, after b you have ashoka and this ashoka and bindusara what is their contribution bindusara changed his religion to ajivikas okay ajivikas remember this and this ajivikas was started by makali gosala write down this name makali gosala he is a monk like mahavir and buddha there is one more important person in history who started uh, this ajivikas now what is mean by ajivikas the day when you are born your fate is written the day when you are born your fate is written so everything is happening according to fate that is what makali gosala is trying to say now after that you have ashoka now ashoka there is a long story i'll quickly tell it and then expected questions in examination i have told you chandragupta maurya he goes down south to capture bindusara goes down south to capture but they could not do it so now ashoka wanted to capture the whole down south the tamil land here but there were three people here chandra chera cholas pandyas and when ashoka came down south he had to face defeat so he got angry he changed his direction and now he is going towards a place called as kalinga place called as kalinga and this kalinga is today's modern day odisha okay today's modern day odisha so here kalinga was a republican country okay it was a republic that means there was a proper government there was a proper rule everything was fine so this is what has happened ashoka without giving warning he attacks this place and there was a bloody war many people died and in this war he decided to change his mind what was the cause of all this destruction it was his anger so he wanted to control, control his emotions so now he is looking for something which will give him peace which will give him you know satisfaction so that time there is a monk called as upagupta important okay which monk is responsible for converting ashoka into buddhism yeah answer is upagupta so with the support of upagupta ashoka changed his religion to buddhism okay and after changing his religion to buddhism he is appointing some persons called as dhamma matas okay dhamma matas are the ministers who will look over strictly over the dhammas dhammas are nothing but buddhist law to be followed okay buddhist law to be followed by the people by the subjects of his kingdom so this is what is what has happened now in this mauryan dynasty you need to remember one more important person's name a britisher sir joseph princep okay sir joseph princep this uh, joseph princep was responsible for deciphering okay he was responsible for deciphering description of ashoka if sir joseph princep was not there today indians wouldn't have known who is ashoka the great okay and now another important question in your afcat which king is called as devanam piya piyadasi ashoka okay piyadasi that is beloved of god okay beloved of god very favorite to god beloved of god understood devanam piya piyadasi expected question i have got which king is called devanam piya piyadasi sandro sandro cortes okay like this they will ask you got it okay next important travelers okay important travelers megasthenes okay megasthenes he is coming during the rule of chandragupta maurya and he is writing a book called as indica very important he is writing a book called as indica, indica. 
Yeah, yeah. He is from Europe, Greek. Megasthenes. Next, Marco Polo. Okay, Marco Polo. He comes during the time of Ashoka. Okay, and he meets Ashoka's daughter and the younger son in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka. The old name of Sri Lanka is what? Jambu Dweep. After Jambu Dweep, we have changed to Ceylon. After Ceylon, we have now at present Sri Lanka. And Sri Lanka has changed the capital name from Colombo to Sri Jayvardhanapure Kote. Okay. So, who? Marco Polo. Marco Polo haven't written any uh, scripture. I'll just check it. Okay. There is, uh, maybe there is, but I'll just check it and tell you. Megasthen is important. Marco Polo important. These are ancient travelers. Okay. And there is one more Chinese, Fahin, okay, that comes in medieval uh, history that we'll see. Okay, so uh, the Mauryan Empire, Chandragupta, uh, Bindusara and Ashoka. Sir, yeah. Two yeah, yeah, I'm coming to that. Now, Sir Joseph Princep, okay, Sir Joseph Princep, he saw some edicts, rock edicts. And these rock edicts are major rock edicts and minor rock edicts. So, major rock edicts here the 13th major rock edict talks about the Kalinga War. Okay, it talks about the Kalinga War. You got it? Yes. Third, no. Actually, hmm, there is a long list. If you want, you can uh, take my notes. But from, from AFCAD perspective, you keep yourself limited. Okay, I can go in rock addict 1, 2, 3. One rock addict is telling that not to kill animal and eat their flesh. Okay, that much is not important. But 13, we have total 13 rock addict and uh, same 8 or 9 minor addict. Okay, like this we have. And each rock addict talks of in a different, uh, each one is talking about the achievement of the Ashoka. You got it? Okay. Fine. So, this is what has happened with Ashoka and Ashoka was responsible to spread Buddhism all over the world. Okay. And next, after uh, Mauryan dynasty, we have seen uh, one more dynasty. What is that? Uh, Kushanas? Yeah. After Mauryan Empire, you have written what? Kushanas. Hmm. Kushanas, right? Now, here Kushanas was, uh, actually there are two types. First Kushana was started by, write down, the first Kushan dynasty. The first Kushan dynasty. The first Kushan dynasty was started by, was started by, founded by Kujala, Kujala Kadepsis, Kadepsis. Okay, and second Kushan dynasty. And second Kushan dynasty was started by Kanishka. Very, very important. Kanishka. Okay, Kanishka. Done? Okay. So, now here what happens? There was, uh, there was a long silence. After Ashoka passed away, there was a long silence and people followed Buddhism. And slowly there, was, there is confused among people whether Buddha told this or whether Buddha told that. Some people are telling that we have to build a temple and statue for him. And some people are telling that no, we have to follow his thoughts. So there was a confusion. At that time, there was a king called as Kanishka. So what this Kanishka is doing, he is calling for a meeting. Okay, he's calling for a meeting and this was the fourth time such a big meeting has called. And in the fourth meeting, people got divided, the ideologies got divided and Buddhism also got divided into Hinayana and Mahayana. Now, what is this Hinayana, Mahayana, lesser will, greater will, all this we will understand only if you know Buddhism. Okay, Buddhism. Here there was a boy who was born in the name of Siddhartha. Okay, this Siddhartha was born to the father King Suddhodana. Who is the father here? Suddhodana is the father and mother is Maya. Okay, as soon as this boy was born, mother died and now he was taken care by Gautami. Okay, Gautami. Now this Siddhartha was married to Yasodhara. Okay, and he had a son called as Rahul. 
So when uh, the astrologers, they, they checked his future, the astrologers warned his father Suddhodana that he may be a universal teacher or a universal soldier. So the father wanted him to make as a universal soldier. So he was getting all the pleasure in his life. So he married at the age of 16 to Yesodhara. Everything was going on fine. At the age of 28 to 29, he had an inquisitive mind. He wanted to go and check outside what is happening around this world. So he is taking his horse, he is taking his chariot and along with the chariot he is going out of his palace and he is now coming across four symbols. The first is an old man, second is a sick man, third is a dead, dead man and the fourth is a big shoe. Okay, fourth is a big shoe. These four symbols, it creates some confusion in his mind and now he tries to search for the truth. Okay, now he search for the truth of life. Why we have born? What is the truth of this life? Based on this, he gave four noble truths. Okay, Buddha has given how many noble truths here? Four noble truths. First, the world is full of sufferings. Okay, the world is full of sorrow. Second, where there is desire, there is sorrow. Third, yeah, we can remove this you know, sorrow. Fourth, what is that fourth one? To follow the follow Ashtanga Patha. Ashtanga Patha. That means eight noble path. Okay. Eight noble path. That's it enough. For AFCAD you prepare this much. Don't go much in detail. If you have time go and read all these eight noble path what it is. Okay. But these are the things. Sir, now. Yeah. These four noble truths have that name. Dukha. Yeah. Dukha. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That is for UPSC, you can say, not for AFCAT. Okay, that is for uh, UPSC. Now, in AFCAT, they won't ask, like, uh, for example, uh, how many years did Chandragupta dynasty, I mean, Gomorian dynasty last for? No, no, no. How many years and all they don't ask, but maybe they will ask you in which year it was formed. Okay. So, uh, shall we move forward? Yes. Okay. Buddha was born, Siddhartha was born in a place called as Lumbini. Okay. Then uh, he, wa he got enlightenment. In which place? Okay, under a tree called as Bodhi tree in a place called as Gaya. Okay, and then he gave the first sermon. Yes, first sermon in a place called as Sarnath. Okay, and he and he died in a place called as Kushinagar. Okay, Kushinagar. Okay, next. Jainism, Mahavira was born in place Pava and he died in a place called as Pava Puri. Okay, remember this. The place of birth and the place of death of both these leaders, they may ask you. Okay, so these are some important things. Lumbini, he was born. Lumbini is in Nepal. Okay, Bodhi tree, Gaya, it is in Bihar. Sarnath, it is a pillar. And there we have a stupa also there. And Kushinagar is a place where Buddha died at the age of 87. Okay, now this, what has uh, Buddha done? Buddha was able to recall his 536 previous birth and everything is mentioned in a tales called as Jataka, Jataka tales. tales. Okay, Jataka Tales means it is like a book, a story book. Maybe you might have heard about Ace of Fables, right? Yes. Panchatantra stories, yes. correct? So like that, Jataka Tales is a kind of stories. Okay, and this all is nothing but the previous birth of Siddhartha. Okay, these are all the previous birth of Siddhartha and he has used a language that is Pali language. Very, very important AFCAT question. Which language did Buddha used? Answer is Pali language. Answer is Pali language. Did you understand? Okay. So, these are some uh, things that you need to keep in mind. Have you taken it down? Everyone? Yeah, I am coming to that. Next. The day when he gets an, um, enlightenment, the day when he gives the first uh, sermon, all these things are there. There is a word in Buddhism called as Dharma Chakra Pravartana. Dharma Chakra Pravartana. Dharma Chakra Pravartana is a day when he gives the first sermon okay, for his disciple. Next, Mahapari Nirvana. Okay, Mahapari Nirvana is a day when Buddha died. Okay, Buddha died. Died. So these are the days that you have to keep in mind. Dharma Chakra Pravartana, Mahabari, Nirvana. Understood? Jataka Tales is a books uh, in their um, Buddhist literature. And I have told you 16 Mahajanapadas. Correct? Yes, sir. Si 16 Mahajanapadas. Now here you have something called as Pitakas. Okay, Pitakas. There are three Pitakas. That is Sutta Pitakas. 
Adidama Pitakas, correct? And then Vinaya Pitakas. So under this Sutta Pitakas, there is a book. So this book is telling that once upon a time, some years ago, there were 16 major kingdoms and that is called as Mahajanapadas. Did you understand now, Bharat? Yes, sir. Yes? Okay. Now, if you go under Vinaya Pitaka, in Vinaya Pitaka, there is a book and this book is written called as Jataka Tales. Okay. So what has happened is that historians, they read this book first. They got this book and they are reading the story. So when they are reading the story, every time the hero is telling something. The hero is telling something that, okay, in this birth I got this, in this birth I got information. So historians are confused. So when they check this Jataka tales, it is near inside this. So when they slowly they build up, they got, got to understand that Pitakas, there are three types and then they linked it to Buddhism and that is what is happening. You understood? Okay, so Buddhism, these are a th uh, few things that you need to keep in mind. Dharma Chakra Pravartana, symbol, okay. Next, if anything is remaining, you know, the posture of his hand and etc. That will cover up in the uh, UPSC classes. Next, council, four Buddhist council, very, very important. You take down, the first Buddhist council was held in 483 BC. Was held in 483 BC. It was held in Saptaparni cave. Saptaparni, Saptaparni cave and Mahakasapa was the chairman, Mahakasapa, Mahakasapa was the chairman and the royal king, the royal king was Ajata Shatru, Ajata Shatru from which dynasty? Haranika dynasty. Second Buddhist Council was held in 383 BC before Alexander could come. It was held in a place called as Vaishali and the chairman was Sabakami. Chairman was Sabakami. Kalasoka was the royal king. Kalasoka. Shishunaga dynasty. Shishunaga dynasty. Next, third Buddhist council, 250 BC. It was held in Pataliputra. Pataliputra by, and the chairman was Mogali Putta Tisa. Mogali Putta Tisa. T I S S A. It was by Ashoka. The king was Ashoka. Mauryan dynasty. And the last one, 4th Buddhist council, 72 AD. That means just after 72 years of the birth of Jesus. It is in Srinagar or you can properly say that Kundal one. Kundal one in Kashmir. Vasumitra was the chairman. They may ask you chairman, okay? Vasumitra and Ashwagosha was the vice chairman. And Ashwagosha. And Ashwagosha was the vice chairman and the king was Kanishka. King was Kanishka. Kushan dynasty. Kushan dynasty. Over. Ashwagosha. Ashwagosha. Okay, done boys. Okay, next. Expected question in your exam for AFCAT. Who will be the next Buddha on this earth? Answer is Maitreya. Okay, who will be the next Buddha on this earth? Answer will answer is Maitreya. You got it? So, this is what, yeah, this is what is uh, important from this uh, Buddhism. Okay, now in the fourth Buddhist council, when Kanishka was the king, Buddhism got divided into two. The first one is Hinayana, 
and the second one is mahayana hinayana and mahayana hinayana is called as the lesser wheel and mahayana is called as the greater wheel okay mahayana is called as the greater wheel now today's situation if you see buddhism is divided into further more category the next one is vajrayana okay vajrayana next you have theravada okay theravada so these are the four varieties hinayana mahayana vajrayana and theravada and here after independence in 1950 dr b r ambedkar okay dr b r ambedkar he is a hindu but he changed himself into buddhism so that day is also called as uh, parikrama divas okay just check it i'm i'm just confused whether it is parikrama or something else you can just cross check it and recently the government has taken that day a little seriously okay just go and check it in your uh, text or in internet if time permits okay so this is what is buddhism everyone got it yeah fine so this was this is what has happened and after that see we started with magdha empire after that haranaga shishunaga then you have nanda then you have maurya in maurya you have three chandragupta binduswara ashoka okay and before magdha what did we see indus valley civilization and indus valley civilization what did we see vedic and in vedic which language was spoken sanskrit okay now after chandragupta maurya after mauryan dynasty we have kushanas okay now after kushanas we have guptas okay now what has happened in history see from this vedic time so many kings so many years sanskrit lost its importance sanskrit lost lost its importance so now after many many years when this people come to power they bring this sanskrit back to life they bring this vedic literature back to life they bring hindu they bring hindu uh, you know hindu religion back to life so what is happened here so write down now heading gupta dynasty okay after chandragupta maurya uh, after this kushanas and everyone you can uh, write down there is a small king also sunga dynasty before gupta you can write down sunga sunga dynasty the founder is pushyamitra sunga pushyamitra sunga Pushya Mitra Sunga. He is the founder of this dynasty. Okay. Then you have Kanwa dynasty. Kanwa dynasty founded by Vasudeva. Founded by Vasudeva. Founded by Vasudeva. next satavahanas 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 the founder is simuka simuka s i m u k a simuka huwa next after this you have gupta dynasty now you can say gupta dynasty and gupta dynasty the founder is sri gupta okay sri gupta okay the founder is sri gupta now here there are lot of kings after sri gupta you have chandragupta 1 okay you have chandragupta 1 then you have samudra gupta okay then you have samudra gupta then you have chandra gupta 2 chandra gupta 2 then kumara gupta kumara gupta skanda gupta okay skanda gupta enough there is lot of more kings here but now we have to focus on these people afcat question who is the founder of sri gupta what is the, uh, sorry who is the founder of gupta dynasty answer is sri gupta which king is called as the napoleon of india samudra gupta okay so these are the two things that you need to focus and remember now here under this gupta dynasty under this gupta dynasty the vedic or you can say the sanskrit language flourished once again 
the temples were started building once again okay and hindu religion started expanding once again so after the uh, after the entry of chandragupta maurya people they forgot sanskrit and hindu gods so when ashoka came he made the complete indians and buddhism then kanishka is making like this so near about many many centuries okay many many centuries what has happened people they lost the touch with this hinduism so when this gupta people they came they came to power and they made this hindu religion once again more powerful the first thing what they did is that imagine if this is a tree under this tree buddha got enlightenment okay the first thing which they did in this gaya was okay they came to gaya this gupta people they came and they chopped down this tree they cut down this tree so the symbol the symbol of buddhism was removed from history this is how you know hinduism started reviving and we, uh, they started building temple in upsc examination we'll try to understand how many types of temples are there a small yeah, small just here that is dravida architecture nagara architecture and then you have vesara architecture okay so these are all we'll see in the upsc classes not here in afcat or okay small uh, examinations you got the point here so this is what has happened now after gupta dynasty there was no more uh, a strong king or a ruler who can rule the complete india so slowly there was silence people are confused whether to follow jainism buddhism hinduism otherwise suddenly if new king comes what he will say so they were confused so making of making use of this silence okay making use of this weakness now foreign invasion starts once again but this time the foreign invasion is by a muslim ruler that is muhammad bin qasim okay so now we are entering into medieval history so from ancient history we have entered into which history now medieval history before entering to medieval history let us start little revision okay indus valley civilization who are the important persons here sir john marshall harappa was discovered by dayaram sahani mohenjodaro was discovered by r d banerji okay that we have seen enough and then we have seen vedic literature the oldest veda is rig veda okay mundaka upanishad we have taken satyameva jayati the idea was given by pandit madan mohan malviya okay all these things we have seen then we have seen mahajanapadas correct mahajanapadas 16 mahajanapadas and two sources one is buddhist source and another is jainist source okay just take the, uh, uh, read that book Uh, name and who is a contributor after mahajanapadas we have seen uh, magda kingdom was very famous okay magda kingdom was the uh, winner here among all the territories and who is the founder here Jarasandha. jb okay remember jarasandha and no 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 ah jb remember magda kingdom after magda kingdom which is the next kingdom here haranyaka dynasty haranyaka dynasty so who founded this haranyaka dynasty bimbisara bimbi okay bimbisara after haranyaka dynasty we have another dynasty that is shishunaga shishunaga dynasty okay shishunaga dynasty it is founded by shishunaga himself after shishunaga dynasty we have which dynasty nanda dynasty tell me which kingdom was first started by a non kshatriyans which kingdom nanda dynasty who is the founder of nanda dynasty mahapadma nanda okay after mahapadma nanda dhana nanda you know and during this nanda dynasty alexander invaded india and alexander had a battle with porus it was battle of hidipsis and hidipsis is nothing but river jhelum keep in mind river jhelum and this battle was fight river jhelum and ambi was the king who surrendered to alexander and there was a governor appointed that is seleucus nicator okay now after nanda dynasty we come across a dynasty called as mauryan dynasty who is the founder of mauryan dynasty chandragupta maurya and in chandragupta maurya court there was a poet that is kautalya or her, uh, he has written a book called as arthashastra and uh, this chandragupta maurya turned to jainism with the help of badra bahu and now there is a division in jainism this all we have seen it right okay then we have seen about ashoka okay ashoka is trying to uh, change himself uh, in the battle of kalinga rock edict number 13 okay major rock edict number 13 then dhamas and dhapamatas etc etc and he was changed uh, he changed himself due to the monk of uh, which, uh, which monk here upagupta okay upagupta after ashoka we have seen jainism and buddhism in detail and buddhism siddhartha all the stories you need to remember pitakas sutta pitakas vinaya pitakas okay now in buddhism i forgot to tell one more thing you can just take it down nagarjuna 
okay nagarjuna he is a saint not a movie star here okay nagarjuna he is a monk who was arguing with a greek king milinda and this dialogue turned out to be a book called as pano okay and milinda is also called as meander okay so in afghan if the question comes who wrote the book pano the answer will be milinda wrote a book pano and it is buddhist book okay it, really, it talks about buddhism okay it talks about buddhism so after this um, you know after ashoka and all the, during the time of ashoka there is a meeting third buddhist council okay third buddhist council was headed by whom ashoka and who was the chairman mogali sutta correct no who is that mogali okay just mogali sutta remember that okay and it was held in which place pataliputra okay then after that uh, the travelers who visited chandragupta maurya megasthenes megasthenes visited the uh, fort of the court of chandragupta maurya and he has written which book indica okay megasthenes wrote a book called as indica marco polo visited during the time of ashoka and i have told you our jivikas our jivikas was started by whom makali gosala okay makali gosala remember this so after this you have a dynasty called as kushana 1 who started kushana 1 hmm who started kushana 1 kujala remember okay kujala okay k for kushan k for kujala uh, kushana 2 was started by whom kanishka so what is the major contribution of kanishka here under him there was the fourth buddhist council and this council was held in a place called as kashmir there was a chairman and a vice chairman who is the chairman here vasumitra vasumitra was a chairman and ashvagosha was the vice chairman and in this buddhist council Buddh buddhism got divided into hinayana and mahayana which language did buddha used it was pali language which language did mahavira used it was prakrit language who is the founder of jainism answer is rishab the first tirthankar and the last tirthankar is mahavira okay so after this we are ashoka and all the kushanas and all we have one more dynasty what is that uh, yeah sunga dynasty correct who is the founder of sunga dynasty pushyamitra next after sunga dynasty kanwa dynasty who is the founder of kanwa dynasty okay after kanwa dynasty satavahanas who is the founder of satavahanas okay simuka after satavahanas gupta gupta so who is the founder of gupta dynasty sri gupta okay sri gupta is the uh, founder of the gupta dynasty okay who is called as the napoleon of india samudra gupta now you might have heard a temple called as somnath somnath temple what has happened this somnath temple is here built in this gujarat in the gir forest area and it was built during the gupta time okay the temple had lot of jewels lot of gold diamonds it was very rich okay so now what has this somnath temple played a role in history that we'll try to understand so now we are entering into a time where people are peacefully living their life but now here comes a disturbance from a foreign king is a muslim invader muhammad bin qasim afghan question who is the first muslim invader answer is muhammad bin qasim if the question is who is the first invader answer will be alexander who is the first foreign invader answer is alexander who is the first muslim invader answer is muhammad bin qasim after muhammad bin qasim that is we have a king called as muhammad bin ghazni okay muhammad muhammad of ghazni he attacked india 17 times and his idea was to loot india okay his idea was to loot india so he attacked almost all the north india area and when he came to this gujarat near this somnath he was happy and he looted the temple and that is how he become rich so when he goes back next king comes that is muhammad gori now when muhammad gori comes almost almost the north india was completely ravaged but this rajasthan area in rajasthan we have two kings that is chandravanshi and suryavanshi okay so now this kings they had a strong opposition or they uh, they had a strong um, uh, uh, forces which was attacking gori so now muhammad of gori was uh, fighting with a king called as prithviraj chavan okay now we are entering into the battle okay the first battle of terrain the first battle of terrain was fought between prithviraj chavan and muhammad gori 
Prithviraj Chauhan and Mohammad Ghori. And in this, Ghori was defeated, Prithviraj Chauhan was victorious. Again, the second battle of terrain, now Prithviraj Chauhan was defeated and Ghori was victorious. When Ghori was victorious, when he was ruling the northern India, he got an urgent call back from his kingdom. He goes back, but appointing his slave, Kutubuddin Aibak. Okay, Kutubuddin Aibak. So, Kutubuddin Aibak becomes the first king of this slave dynasty. Okay, this slave dynasty is also called as Ilbari dynasty or it is also called as Mamluk dynasty. So, the Afghan question, who is the founder of this slave dynasty? Answer is Kutubuddin Aibak. Kutubuddin Aibak is also called as Lakbaksh. Favoritely, he is called as Lakbaksh. He started the foundation of the Kutub Minar. He started the foundation of the Kutub Minar in the remembrance of a Sufi saint. In the remembrance of a Sufi saint, Khwaja, Khwaja Kutubuddin. Okay, Swada, uh, Khwaja Kutubuddin Bhaktiyar Kaki. Okay, remember this. Now, this Kutubuddin Aibak had a famous, uh, favorite hobby of riding horse or playing a game called as Chaugan. And he died while playing this game. And after this Kutubuddin Aibak, his son-in-law, very important, his son-in-law, Iltamash. Okay, his son-in-law, Iltamash becomes the new king of this kingdom. That is slave dynasty or Ilbari dynasty. And during the time of Iltamash, there is a foreign invasion by a Mongolian, that is Chengiz Khan. Chengiz Khan enters India, but looking at the generosity of this Iltamash, he goes back. And Iltamash is the founder or is the person who founded the system of Ikta system. Okay, who founded the Ikta system? Answer is Iltamash. Okay, so after Iltamash, now here there is another uh, person here, very important in the history, that is Razia Sultana. Okay, Razia Sultana, examination question, who is the first and the last female ruler of India? Answer is Razia Sultana. Who is the first and the last female ruler of India? Answer is Razia Sultana. After Razia Sultana, four years rule, we have another king called as Balban. Now, Balban is called as Shadow of God. He is called as what? Shadow of God. When it comes to medieval history, if Afcat is asking you questions from medieval history, definitely they will ask you the nicknames. Okay, that's the reason I gave you the nickname of Chandragupta Maurya. Understood? So, now Balban is called as Shadow of God and he has introduced two systems called as Sizdas and Paibos. Sizdas and Paibos, after Balban, the slave dynasty gets over. Then we see the Khilji dynasty. Okay, so now let me talk about Khilji dynasty. Khilji dynasty was started by Jalaluddin Khilji. It was started by Jalaluddin Khilji. But after Jalaluddin Khilji, we have another important king called as Allahuddin Khilji. Okay, Allahuddin Khilji. Now, Allahuddin Khilji, okay, he is favoritely called as Sikandar I Sahani. He is favoritely called as what? Sikandar I Sahani. And he built Adai Dinka Jopra. Okay, Adai Dinka Jopra near Kutub Minar. Okay. Sorry. No, no. He didn't build Adai Dinka Jopra. He built Alai Darwaza. Okay. He built Alai Darwaza. And Adai Dinka Jopra was built by uh, another king. I think it is uh, Kutubuddin Aibak. Just check it. Okay. Adai Dinka Jopra is also one monument. I may ask you next uh, exam. Alai Darwaza. Alai Darwaza was built by Alauddin Khilji. And he was the king who introduced the market reforms. Okay, he introduced market reforms and he was the person who started this uh, paying cash to the soldiers. Okay, remember this. Okay, remember this. Next, Alauddin Khilji was the first king to invade South India. From the time of Chandragupta Maurya, Ashoka, nobody was able to attack South India. But Alauddin Khilji was the first king to attack South India. And he had two important generals with him. That is Malik Kafur. Malik Kafur and Malik Ambar. Okay, Malik Kafur and Malik Ambar. Okay, these are the two things that you need to keep in mind. You got the point here? Malik Kafur and Malik Ambar. Just remember Sikandar Sahani, nickname for AFCAT examination. Alai Darwaza, this is for AFCAT examination. Got it? Now, they may not ask you questions on Padmavat. Okay, who, what happened? Is it true that Padmavati and all these things? They don't ask that. After Kilji dynasty, you have a favorite dynasty called as Tughlaq dynasty. Tughlaq dynasty was started by Giyasuddin Tughlaq. 
it was started by Giyasuddin Tughlaq. After that, we have a famous king that is Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Now, this guy is famous for two mistakes of his life. That is shifting the capital from Delhi to Devgiri. Okay, Delhi to Devgiri. Or Devgiri is also called as Daulatabad. Okay, it is also called as Daulatabad. And introducing the token currency. These are the two mistakes. Okay, these are the two mistakes by uh, Muhammad bin Tughlaq. After Muhammad bin Tughlaq, we have Firoz Shah Tughlaq. Okay, Firoz Shah Tughlaq. And Firoz Shah Tughlaq took over the restoration work of Qutub Minar. Once there was a lightning and Qutub Minar, the top floor got uh, damaged. And Firoz Shah Tughlaq, he restored it, he repaired it. And this was the last Afghan question. Okay. And uh, I forgot to mention that Iltamash, he completed the constructions of Qutub Minar. Kutubuddin Aibak, he had the foundation but he died while playing Chaugan. But the rest completion of this building was done by Iltamash. Okay, remember this. Now, after Firoz Shah Tughlaq, here there is not uh, no more importance to this Tughlaq dynasty. And now here, after Tughlaq dynasty, you have Lodi dynasty. The founder of Lodi dynasty is Bahalol Khan Lodi. After Bahalol Khan Lodi, you have Sikandar Lodi. Okay, after Bahalol Khan Lodi, you have Sikandar Lodi. After Sikandar Lodi, you have another king that is Ibrahim Lodi. But when Ibrahim Lodi was about to become king, he had an enemy inside his family that is Daulat Khan Lodi. Now, Daulat Khan Lodi is inviting an Afghan general, a very famous Afghan general that is Babur. Okay, Babur. Now, with Babur and Ibrahim Lodi, in the year 1526, in the year 1526, they had the first battle of Panipat. So, the first battle of Panipat, Afghan question, in which year it took place? 1526. Between whom it took place? Ibrahim Lodi and Babur. So, in this battle, Babur was victorious and now here we begin an empire called as Mughal Empire. Okay, Mughal Empire. So, till 1530, Babur rules this Mughal Empire and he gives his kingdom to his next, his son, that is Humayun. Okay, and after Humayun, there is a story of, you know, all these things. But before that, let us try to revise what we have seen. First, we have seen Slave Dynasty. Okay, next we have seen Khilji Dynasty. Next, we have seen Tughlaq Dynasty. Okay, then we have seen Lodi Dynasty. And then we are going to see which dynasty here? Mughal Empire. Okay. So, slave dynasty. Who is the first king here? Kutubuddin Aibak. Lakshbaks. Remember Lakshbaks and Kutub Minar. Okay. Like this you remember. After Kutub, uh, Kutubuddin, you have Iltamash. Ikta system, Chengiz Khan. And he is introduced. Yeah, completed the construction of Kutub Minar. Then we have which king here? Razia Sultana, the first and the last female Muslim ruler. And then we have Balban, who introduced Sizdas and Paibos. Okay, Sizdas and Paibos, and he is also called as Shadow of God. Next in Khilji dynasty, you have Jalaluddin Khilji, the ruler, the founder. Then you have Alauddin Khilji. Okay, he built uh, Alai Darwaza. He is called as Sikandarai Sahani, introduction of market reforms. And he is the first Indian king to go and attack down till south. Tughlaq dynasty, it was started by Giyasuddin Tughlaq. Then you have Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Then you have Firoz Shah Tughlaq. Okay, remember this. Muhammad bin Tughlaq, two mistakes. After that, Lodi. You have a king called as Bahalol Khan Lodi. After that, you have Sikandar Lodi. After that, you have Ibrahim Lodi. Now, Ibrahim Lodi and Babur, they have a fight. Okay, and this fight is called as Battle of Panipat in 1526. After Babur, you have a king called as Humayun. After Humayun, you have a king called as Akbar. After Akbar, you have a king called as Jahangir. And after Jahangir, you have a king called as Shah Jahan. And after Shah Jahan, you have a king called as Aurangzeb. And Aurangzeb and Shivaji, they both are fighting. Okay, now Shivaji has two sons, Sambaji and Rajaram. So, now we are going to see this. Did you understand now? Okay, so now we are entering into the Mughal Empire. Okay, we are entering into the Mughal Empire. After Babur, the next king was Humayun. But when Humayun became the king, he was challenged by another king called as Sher Shah Suri. Okay, Sher Shah Suri. So, um, you know, in, the, in a decisive battle, Humayun could not defeat Sher Shah Suri. So, Humayun, along with his king, uh, general Bairam Khan, 
along with this general bairam khan they escaped into forest and they stayed there for some years and after some years they attacked sher shah suri and he was defeated once again and now humayun he had found of he was very fond of reading books and he had a library one day he was trying to take a book from his uh, library from a third floor he slipped and he fell down and he died on the spot so here in history we have an another king who died from uh, in his duty so the question could be which king died from the staircase of the library answer is humayun so when he died his 13 year old son that is akbar he becomes a king so when akbar becomes a king the neighboring king that is hemu he challenges himself for the battle and this is called as the second battle of panipat this is called as what this is called as second battle of panipat between akbar and hemu but akbar was a small boy he could not go so in place of him on behalf of him bairam khan goes and fight this battle so akbar is victorious that is bairam khan is victorious for another 50 years akbar rules india very effectively now akbar had some jewels in his courts okay he had some nine jewels okay he had nine jewels in his court first one is birbal okay now the afcat question birbal what afcat question birbal what is the real name of birbal answer is mahesh das okay next year you have some important jewels like abul fazil okay then fazil ali okay then you have tansein okay their contribution tansein is a musician and then you have a person called as uh, yeah raja todarmal okay raja todarmal okay so raja todarmal was he was responsible for the revenue system land revenue system so this is how akbar had uh, you know control over his administration and akbar had started something called as dinahi lahi these are the two things you remember dinahi lahi and ain e akbari okay ain e akbari dinahi lahi is a kind of new religion which akbar wanted to start and ain e akbari is the autobiography of akbar this is the autobiography of akbar understood now akbar had a fight with a king called as rana pratap okay maharana pratap and this battle is called as battle of haldi ghati okay battle of haldi ghati this is what it is and now akbar had built a monument that is uh, in a place called as fatehpur sikri in a place called as fatehpur sikri he had built a monument that is buland darwaza okay buland darwaza akbar had victory over a place called as gujarat in his campaign in order to celebrate that in order to celebrate that victory he wanted to build a monument so he built buland darwaza and he built a city called as fatehpur sikri okay he built a city called as fatehpur sikri and he was also happy with the good news that he had given a birth to a baby boy and that baby boy was named as salim Uh, he was named because of one of the sufi saint okay who had blessed him as a baby boy so that salim in future he becomes a king that is jahangir okay that is jahangir that's it fine this is enough for our afghan history but sometimes they will ask you questions like wazir e azam what does it mean okay wazir e azam what is the rank of general in akbar's administration they will ask you like this what is the rank of uh, you know what that rank is called wazir okay then you have pradhan okay pradhan in uh, marathi you know in shivaji administration you have pradhan peshwa etc that also they may ask you but at least we have to know this basics okay this much we don't have time and it is it will be confusing so even if you skip this part it's okay okay next you have after uh, akbar you have a king called as jahangir okay jahangir and during this time two english gentlemen sir william hawkins okay sir william hawkins and sir thomas row sir william hawkins and some sir thomas row they both come into india to take permission to start a company that is called as east india company and this permission was given and these people they landed in a place called as surat english they landed in surat okay so after jahangir there is a uh, king called as shah jahan and he is famous for building monuments okay shah jahan is famous for building monuments and nothing special about him is uh, their controversy like a battle or something but there is another person called as aurangzeb 
ओके औरंगजेब ही इज फेवरेटली कॉल्ड एज अलमगीर और ही इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज जिंदा पीर ओके अलमगीर और जिंदा पीर ओके नाउ वॉट आर द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ औरंगजेब औरंगजेब हैड बिल्ड अ मॉन्यूमेंट कॉल्ड एज बीबी का मकबरा ओके बीबी का मकबरा इट एक्सैक्टली लुक्स लाइक ताजमहल इन औरंगाबाद ओके इट एक्सैक्टली लुक्स लाइक ताजमहल रिमेंबर दिस ओके Now Aurangzeb had always issue with a Maratha king that is Chhatrapati Shivaji. Okay, Chhatrapati Shivaji. So we are into Maratha Empire now. Chhatrapati Shivaji's father is Shahaji, Shahaji Rao Bosle, and mother is Jija Bai. Okay, and the teacher is Dado Ji Kond Dev. Akbar had a teacher that is Bairam Khan. and shivaji had a teacher that is dadoji kondev and shivaji had two son that is sambhaji and rajaram sambhaji and rajaram rajaram was married to a lady that is tarabai and this two had a son called as shivaji two and sambhaji had a son called as shahuji After the death of Shivaji at the age of 57, Sambhaji takes the control and he is attacking Aurangzeb. Aurangzeb died at the age of 90. So even after Shivaji died, Aurangzeb was attacking Sambhaji. So now Sambhaji and Aurangzeb they are fighting, and in one decisive battle, in the Battle of Raigad, okay, in the Battle of Raigad, uh, Sambhaji was killed, and his young son Shahuji was arrested by Aurangzeb and sent to jail. Okay, and he was sent to jail. After many years, after near, near about two decades, when Shahuji was released, he was shocked to see that when there was no Sambhaji and no Shahuji, Tara Bai had made Shivaji too as the ruler of Maratha Empire. So there was a fight now, family dispute: who will be the next ruler of this Maratha Empire? So in this fight, they all people they went separately in a different direction, in you know staying in a different places, and here there was a vacancy of who will rule this Maratha Empire. so at that time this vacancy was filled by the peshwa okay and the first peshwa is balaji vishwanath favorite af cat question balaji vishwanath and now shivaji he had started something called as ashtanga pradhan okay he has started something called as ashtanga pradhan and they had eight ministers the first one is peshwa that is the prime minister Okay, so Balaji Vishwanath. Now, after this, we call it as Peshwa Raj. We have Balaji Vishwanath, Balaji Baji Rao. Okay, all these things are there. You got the point here. Fine. Next, half cat question. In this, what they will ask? Treaty of Salbai. Okay, just check it between whom this was signed. I haven't taken this in classes. I am telling you during the revision class here now. Treaty of Salbai. They may ask you. Treaty of Purandar. They may ask you. between whom this treaty of salba and treaty of purandar was signed next treaty of srirangapatnam treaty of srirangapatnam they may ask you i have seen this questions here salba treaty of salba purandar okay treaty of srirangapatnam this was between which two kings whether it is indians and the britishers okay so this is srirangapatnam that is correct tipu sultan and this yeah hyder ali and those people okay fine so uh, by this time you know british people they are already trying to take the control and now quickly i'll tell you the year and i'll finish off this with the modern history ready okay so here we are in the year that is 1757 in 1757 there is a english general called as robert clive okay there is a tragedy happening in bengal that is called as black hole tragedy so robert clive he attacked a king a bengal king called as siraj ud daula okay siraj ud daula and this battle is called as battle of plassey so this battle of plassey took place in the year 1757 and in this battle robert clive won and now here there is a person called as mir jafar the ruler of bengal appointed by the britishers but after mir jafar there was a problem so mir qasim was made and this problem goes on and in 19, 1764 there was last one battle that is battle of baksar in which the english took the complete control of the bengal area and now within 10 years in 1773 the british started making rules and regulations 
the first governor of bengal was declared as robert clive but in 1773 they started passing some act called as regulating act so this uh, this uh, you know uh, procedure of making or passing the regulating act was done every 20 years every 10 years to every 20 years the britishers they had an habit of passing a law changing the law and they used to make india as a laboratory to test their law so the first governor was robert clive and under this regulating act 1773 warren hastings lord warren hastings was declared as the governor general of bengal governor general of bengal so here could be a question who was the first governor of bengal robert clive who was the first governor general of bengal warren hastings next 1806 you have a mutiny called as velour mutiny okay next you have 1848 a very important thing that is lord dalhousie becomes the governor general okay lord dalhousie becomes a governor general and he introduced doctrine of lapse he introduced doctrine of lapse that means if the king does not have any son the whole kingdom will be taken away by the britishers and slowly there was restless among the indian rulers and in 1857 we had the first revolt of independence first revolt of independence rani lakshmi bai jhalkari bai tatya tope nana saheb so many guys are there okay for afghan they won't ask but just remember first revolt of independence happened in 1857 afghan related question who was the governor general during 1857 answer is lord canning what is the answer here lord canning next after 1857 when queen's proclamation was declared okay when queen's proclamation was declared at that time who was the governor general or who was the first viceroy answer is same lord canning okay lord canning remember this then in the year 1853 we know that railway was introduced between bombay to thane telegraph system and the pin code system was started under lord delauzi you got it next after 1858 the next important year we have 1885 okay we have 1885 in 1885 in bombay there was an important incident indian national congress was formed the idea was given by whom allen octavian hume he was a retired british civil servant british he was not an indian he was a retired british civil servant and here the first indian to be the president of the indian national congress is vyomesh chandra banerjee expected question in afcat okay vyomesh chandra banerjee is the first president of indian national congress okay remember this next after this you have another important person from indian national congress dada bhai nauroji dada bhai nauroji is favorably called as the grand old man of india grand old man of india afcat question nicknames they will ask you who is called as mahamana who is called as deshbandhu dinabandhu okay next dada bhai nauroji has also written a book called as poverty and un british rule okay poverty and un british rule poverty and un british rule this is a book written by whom dada bhai nauroji next dr ani besant okay dr ani besant she was the first female president of indian national congress she was the first female president of indian national congress in the year 1917 the first indian is sarojini naidu okay the first indian female is sarojini naidu to be the president of indian national congress remember this the first indian muslim to be the president of indian national congress is badruddin tyabji okay badruddin tyab ji remember this okay year we don't know i think it is uh, in 1923 or 4 after this non cooperation movement but check it okay next question they may ask you who was the viceroy during the time of formation of the indian national congress it is lord dufferin okay lord dufferin remember this so whatever is there here on this slide here it is very very important okay moving ahead um then 1885 you have an issue in 1905 this is bengal split the british government decided to split bengal due to the administrative reason 
and this bengal was divided in the communal basis that is hinduism and muslim a muslim and people were sad and they started singing a song that is vande mataram vande mataram is written in which language bengali vande mataram is written in which language hmm it is written in sanskrit language okay next it is written by bumkin chandra bumkin chandra chatterjee okay it is written by bumkin chandra chatterjee and it is taken from a book called as anandamat and this anandamat book was inspired by an incident incident called as sanyasi revolt okay sanyasi revolt fine so this is what it is people started singing this song and 1907 there was a split in indian national congress and this split is called as moderate and extremist moderates and extremists this happened in a place called as surat okay next after 1907 we have an important event that is in 1913 rabindranath tagore gets the nobel prize for literature for the book geetanjali next very very important 9th of january 1915 remember this date 9th of january 1915 mohandas karamchand gandhi written back from south africa that means mahatma gandhi comes back from south africa to india at the age of 46 so every year every year we celebrate 9th of jan as the national nri day okay pravasi bhartiya divas okay next in 1917 okay in 1917 there is an incident called as champaran satyagraha ahmedabad satyagraha kheda satyagraha okay they don't ask much in detail so i am running over it next in 13th of april 1919 13th of april 1919 there was an incident happened that is jallianwala bag incident okay jallianwala bag incident and this was due to the raulat act okay this was due to the raulat act what happened was there was a governor of punjab his name is michael dovan what is his name michael dovan and he ordered general dyer okay he ordered general dyer to control the violence in the punjab street but on 13th of april 1919 this was a special day that is baisakhi day so baisakhi day was celebrated and general dyer he went to the place where people were celebrating so he went to jallianwala bag and he killed many innocent indians so that is what it is now after this incident what has happened there was a committee set up called as hunter commission hunter commission was set up to check whether general dyer has done correct or wrong so hunter commission told general dyer is correct we have to leave him so he was sent back to england okay next to protest what happened was rabindranath tagore gave away his knighthood okay knighthood is a title given by the queen of britain to all the special talented individuals so knighthood was given away by rabindranath tagore and mahatma gandhi mahatma gandhi gave away his title kesari hind okay which he has won in a war called as boer war okay he has won in a war in south africa so when there was a war going on what gandhi ji did he went to that war and he started giving first aid to the in, uh, injured soldiers so that's the reason he got an award called as kesari hind in south africa and he gave away this uh, medal that i don't want from the um, administration or the dynasty which is killing innocents so this is what has happened but this michael doan who was the culprit he was killed by a person called as uddam singh and maybe you have seen a movie okay maybe a mo- you have seen a movie released in amazon got it now next after this 1919 what happened gandhi ji decided to start a movement called as non cooperation movement and this was also joined by a movement called as khilafat movement khilafat movement was started by ali brothers the first one is mohammad ali the first one is mohammad ali and another is shaukat ali mohammad ali and shaukat ali they started khilafat movement in order to get the rights of the caliph who was the head of the muslim all over the world in turkey what happened here was 1914 to 1918 there was first world war in this first world war turkey germany italy they were on one side uk usa russia they were on one side so this team turkey germany italy they lost so what united kingdom did they told turkey there is a head called as caliph he is the muslim leader all over the world we will abolish this title so when this decision was taken muslims all over the world they were angry in india it was ali brothers they joined hand with gandhi ji and they started khilafat movement 
But in the year 1922, 22 policemen were burnt alive. Okay, and this incident is called as Chauri Chaura. Okay, this incident is called as what? Chauri Chaura, and Gandhi ji stopped this non-cooperation movement. In 1928, a commission is coming to India. That is Simon Commission. The Simon Commission wants to decide whether Indians are capable to rule themselves. Okay, whether Indians are ready to rule themselves. But all the seven members are from Britishers, so there was a hue and cry in India. That is Simon go back. Okay, so in 1929, Gandhi ji on one side he started civil disobedience movement, or it is also called as what? It is also called as Salt Satyagraha. It is also called as Salt Satyagraha. Now what happened? I am just running over the AFCAT syllabus. If you want to have a taste of the UPSC syllabus, the questions will be like this: From Sabarmati to Dandi, okay, 78 members of Indian National Congress from Sabarmati to Dandi, 240 miles, okay, 240 miles. In the month of March and April, imagine the summer season is going to start and Tropic of Cancer is just passing over this Gujarat. And Gandhi ji is about 60 years old. Okay, think this is the situation, and he is going to walk barefoot. What the point here? So now what happens when Gandhi ji was doing salt satyagraha here in north, in down south, see Raja Gopala Chari. He was doing satyagraha from Trichy to Vedaranyam. Okay, this is your UPSC syllabus. But I am just telling you AFCAT syllabus, 1929 Civil Disobedience Movement and Salt Satyagraha from Sabarmati to Dandi. How many members here? 78, 78 members. And there was only one female member. She is Sarojini Naidu. Naidu. Okay, Sarojini Naidu. So that is why she is called as the Nightingale of India. Okay. Now uh, after this, what happens? 1929. On the other side, in 1930, the Indian National Congress under the presidentship of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. Okay, in a place called as Lahore, they come up with a meeting and they declared Purna Swaraj. That means complete independence. Your AFCAT question: In which year? In which session? In which place? And who was the president who declared Purna Swaraj? This one line will give you maybe three marks or six marks. Okay, and in this session, Motilal Nehru. Okay, in this session, Motilal Nehru he gave a rough constitution. He gave a rough constitution to India on 26th of Jan 1930. On 26th of Jan 1930. That's the reason every year we celebrate Republic Day on which date? 26th of January 1930. Now, after this civil uh, salt satyagraha, Gandhi ji and all the important leaders were arrested, and Gandhi ji was kept in Yarwada jail. Gandhi ji was kept in. Yerwada Jail. So Gandhi ji and there was an important person called as Lord Irwin. So this is called as Gandhi Irwin Pact. According to Gandhi Irwin Pact, it was decided that there will be round table conference and the Prime Minister of Britain is going to declare independence or freedom to Indians. For that, Gandhi have to go and talk. Okay, but Gandhi told that you have to release all the political prisoners. You have to release all the political prisoners. You have to release all the important, uh, the person, those who haven't done the crime, etc. So this is what the point it is. But Lord Irwin told, "I will release all the leaders, those who have not indulged in violence. Okay, who have not indulged in violence. Okay, so these are the some points. So according to this pact, first round table conference, second and third round con uh, conference uh, happened. Gandhi ji did not attend the first round table conference. He attended the second. He did not attend the third one also. Muslim League they attended the first round table conference. They did not attend the second. They did not attend the third one also. But Dr. B R Ambedkar he attended all the three. Now there is a pact called as Pune Pact. Pune Pact. When Gandhi ji was inside Yerwada Jail, when Gandhi ji was inside Edwada Jail, that time Lord Irwin wanted Gandhi ji to sign Pune Pact. Gandhi ji told, "I am not going to sign this because you are treating Dalit separately. You are giving them separate rights. This will create problem in future." But when Gandhi ji refused to do it, this Pune Pact was signed by Dr. B R Ambedkar. It was signed by whom? Dr. B R Ambedkar. So this is this is in this Pune Pact. It was told that separate representation. There will be separate representation for the Dalits. In the elections, so for that B R Ambedkar B R Ambedkar should go and attend all these three meetings. So this is what has happened. Okay. So after 1930, three roundtable conference in 
in 1938 okay subhash chandra bose he becomes the president of indian national congress in 1939 he was removed from the indian national congress because of disciplinary action 3rd of september 1939 there was the beginning of second world war then you have august of a crips mission wavel plan and cabinet mission so this cabinet mission begins the formation of the indian polity that is indian constitution that is you have the 9th of december 1946 the first date this is your polity chapter i will not come to this got it so this is one thing next coming to the extremist leader okay coming to the extremist leader you have lokmanya tilak now we'll have to see extremist the person those who indulge in violence okay the first one let us see lokmanya tilak okay lokmanya tilak this lokmanya tilak has he was running two newspaper that is maratha and kesari okay maratha and kesari and he uh, he has helped chapekar brothers okay he had helped chapekar brothers to assassinate the commissioner rand okay commissioner rand of pune okay commissioner rand of pune who was mishandling the plague situation this is what has happened now lokmanya tilak he was arrested in the year 1907 after the indian national congress got split up under 1878 vernacular press act okay vernacular press act according to this vernacular press act any newspaper or any editor who is typing anything who is sending message anything against the english government they will be arrested so he was sent to jail for 18 months after when he comes he started a movement called as home rule league movement but this movement was confined only to deccan plateau it was only confined to deccan plateau but here there was a famous person that is ani besan ani besan was doing all over india so they both joined together and they started indian national congress reviving it okay giving once more one life to it so this is what has happened okay lokmanya tilak next let us try to understand who is ani besan she is from usa and she belonged to a society called as theosophical society we society theosophical and this theosophical society was started by madame blavatsky okay it was started by whom madame blavatsky and the headquarter was in new york the headquarter was in new york when any besant came to india that time she realized that she has to do something to the indians she has to fight for the rights for the indians and she joined indian national congress and important thing what are the newspapers started by any besant commonwealth okay this is one newspaper start by any besan one more newspaper is there just you can go and check it okay afcat question who started the commonwealth newspaper the books etc okay then dada bhai noroji you have written poverty and un british rule yes, okay and there is a newspaper called as rast goftar okay you can take down rast goftar this also you keep in mind okay now next after any besan you know 1917 she was the president of inc you have bhagat singh okay you have bhagat singh what happened with bhagat singh is that his uncle ajit singh okay his uncle ajit singh has started a party called as gadar party okay and this gadar party was started due to a incident called as koma gata maru incident okay koma gata maru incident this is the name of a ship this ship came from in india it went to canada but it was refused to uh, dock here again from canada it came to india and lot of people died in the violence with the policemen here in india so ajit singh started a party gadar party in a place called as san francisco okay san francisco this is the uh, party started here uh, gadar party and now uh, this gadar party started recruiting lot of extremist leader to kill the british officers okay to kill the british officers and they they were doing successfully and here there is an incident called as kakori train robbery so in this kakori train robbery there is a person called as bismillah khan okay bismillah khan uh, sorry ram prasad bismil i forgot it yeah ram prasad bismil and ram prasad bismil has written a poem sarfaroshi ki tamanna ab hamare dil mein hai okay that is one poem next bhagat singh he was inspired by a movement called as jallianwala bag incident he want to take revenge so he joins hindustan republican army okay hindustan socialist republican army he joined this and he was fighting against the britishers one day along with lala lajpat rai 
ओके अलोंग विथ लाला लजपत राय लाला लजपत राय इज कॉल्ड एज ए पंजाब केसरी और लाइन ऑफ पंजाब दे वेर प्रोटेस्टिंग अगेंस्ट साइमन कमीशन बट लाला लजपत राय सकम टू द लाठी चार्ज एंड नाउ भगत सिंह गॉट एंग्री ही वांटेड टू टेक रिवेंज एंड किल द पुलिसमैन हु ऑर्डर्ड लाठी चार्ज वन डे इवनिंग व्हेन ही किल्ड एंड ही वाज रनिंग फॉर हिज लाइफ द नेक्स्ट डे व्हेन ही हर्ड अ न्यूज़ दैट पुलिस ऑफिसर साउंडर्स इज मर्डर बाय भगत सिंह ही वाज शॉक्ड टू सी ही वाज समवन एल्स Bhagat Singh did not kill a policeman who want who had ordered the lathi charge. It was someone else. Okay, so Bhagat Singh was always on run, but with the help of Bhagat Singh, uh, Sukhdev, and Rajguru, in 1929, when in Constitution Assembly, when bill was passed, Trade Dispute Bill and Public Safety Bill, when these two bill was passed, that time Bhagat Singh he threw bomb in Central Legislative Assembly, and he told in Kilab, Zindabad, but they, he did not kill anyone. he was arrested and he was kept in a jail in a place lahore and when he was about to send to gallows he was reading a book written by karl marx okay he was reading a book by karl marx that is das capital and now bhagat singh has also written a book by himself why i am an atheist okay why i am an atheist so these are some achievement of bhagat singh still many things are there why he turned against gandhi ji why he turned against dala lajpat rai that is upsc syllabus after this you have subhash chandra bose okay he escape from india he go to germany okay he go to germany he goes to italy he meets all the leaders international leaders and he fights for indian freedom and in germany he started azad hind radio he started what azad, azad hind radio in germany but in japan he started azad hind force okay azad hind force remember this and now current affairs which day is celebrated as parakram divas jan 23 that uh, statue is yes jan 23rd jan 23rd right parakram divas they may ask you national days and international days definitely an expected question and bhagat uh, subhash chandra bose started a party called as forward block okay so there are n number of uh, extremist leader now coming to social reforms important maybe they will ask you raja ram mohan roy started what he started two samaj first is brahmo samaj and next is atmiya samaj atmiya samaj and he had a newspaper that is samvad kaumudi newspaper okay samvad kaumudi remember this next after that you have the debendranath tagore okay debendranath tagore who headed this brahmo samaj after that you have kesub sanjas uh, kesub chandra sen who headed this brahmo samaj and this brahmo samaj got divided into two in future first is adi brahmo samaj and next is sadharan brahmo samaj this much detail they don't ask in afcat you leave it next who started arya samaj dayanand saraswati dayanand saraswati he started arya samaj in gujarat next who started satya sodhak samaj satya sodhak samaj mahatma jyotirao phule mahatma jyoti rao phule okay remember and he is the first mahatma in india it is not mahatma gandhi it is mahatma jyoti rao phule who is the first mahatma in india and he, mahatma jyoti rao phule has written a book that is gulam giri okay gulam giri is the book written by mahatma jyoti rao phule now next after that you have sndp sri narayan guru dharma paripalana started by narayan guru next self respect movement started by periyar okay this self respect movement was started by ev ramasami okay ev ramasami from tamil nadu okay ev ramasami from tamil nadu in future it becomes justice party and justice party was started by aringar anna or anna dore and after that it becomes dmk and after that it becomes aidmk etc and yesterday you have seen a article written by this uh, chief minister of tamil nadu belonging to dmk party okay so this is one thing tribal movement they haven't asked till now in afcat so skip that part okay now newspapers okay newspapers and the books and authors by the indian leaders that you have to focus for example lokmanya tilak maratha and kesri correct maratha and kesri dada bhai navroji rast goftar is the newspaper which is the oldest newspaper in india answer is bengal gazette okay which is the first newspaper in india answer is bengal gazette remember this okay so there is a long list swadeshi mitran okay swadeshi mitran who started this yeah ayer okay gs ayer started it next swatantra um 
देर इज वन मोर न्यूज पेपर बाई सी राजोपालचारी चेक इट देन सम न्यूज पेपर बाई दी फॉरिन नो इन इट वॉज स्टार्ट इन फॉरिन मैडम ब्लावेस्की मैडम बिकाजी खामा हेज स्टार्टेड इट ओके आई हैव गिवन यू लॉन्ग लिस्ट ऑफ दैट न्यूज पेपर सी इन मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री वॉट यू डू focus on the newspaper who started it books who started it and now the nicknames okay very very important nicknames they will ask you who is called as mahamana what is the answer who is called as favoritely which leader is favoritely called as mahamana pandit madan mohan malviya who is that pandit madan mohan malviya who is called as gurudev who is called as mahakavi pandit that is rabindranath tagore okay next who is called as uh, deshabandhu deshabandhu dinabandhu okay next guruji ms ms golwalkar okay okay remember this next after this uh, who is called as man of peace yeah lal bahadur shastri okay like this you keep in mind any any one else i think uh, some mahamana gurudev deshbandhu dinabandhu guruji is over man of peace maybe some more titles are remaining you just go and check nicknames okay nicknames you yeah lion, lion of punjab lala lajpat rai okay this all we have seen it okay fine so this is what you have to focus Uh, you know, for AFCAT, they are not going to ask you tribal uprising or something. Books and authors, you just focus it. Newspaper, you focus it. That's it. Okay. So history part is over. World history is remaining. It is not for AFCAT. It is for UPSC. And in UPSC, it is only for NDA. It is not for CDS. But I have seen one CDS. They have asked one question, and the question was very tough. You you know, only a history student can write it. They have given like this: French Revolution, American Revolution, World War One. and renaissance okay then uh, world war 2 american revolution french revolution they have given like this and they have told which of the following is correct in chronology okay which of the following is correct in chronology what is it mean that a student only when he knows american french russian world war 1 world war 2 only when he knows this then only he will be able to answer this yes. okay so there is no textbook in this planet earth which will give you the right answer ha huh? okay take down the question take down the answer okay so this is what is upsc is all about yes any doubt you have anything extra which you have studied and i have missed here in any history class yes girls boys in modern history you have come across something in a test series or some books yeah nothing any other doubt any other doubt in history the yeah 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 i forgot the nickname of these lords okay uh, who is called as father of local self government okay who is called as father of local self government answer is lord ripon who is called as father of education system in india okay answer is lord maculay okay next who is called as father of liberator of press okay liberator of press they may they, uh, they may ask you this answer is metcalf okay answer is metcalf next um that's it right uh who was the lord during the partition of who was the lord during the partition of bengal answer is lord curzon okay very important lord curzon got it and then the uh, normal gk static part who is the first governor general of india law of free india who is the first governor general of free india lord mountbatten okay next who is the first indian governor general of free india see rajagopala chari okay rajagopala chari okay remember this okay fine so any other lords i am missing here there are many right lord metcalf yeah, lord lighten is also there okay remember just go and check who is lord lighten got it yeah in our app there is one uh, P, uh, ppt powerpoint presentation which i have uploaded all the achievements of lords okay you can just go and download it but that is very high level that is like it will help you in ups exam not for afcat you can start reading it now yeah that was william bentick william bentick with the help of raja ram mohan roy okay who abolished sati answer is lord william bentick okay and lord william bentick 
and then who introduced subsidiary alliance who introduced subsidiary alliance lord wellesley okay lord wellesley remember this that's it okay who introduced subsidiary alliance lord wellesley then father who is uh, father of indian isro vikram sara by father of missile system dr apj abdul kalam okay father of green revolution ms ms swaminathan okay next after green revolution you have white revolution correct yeah so these are some things that you need to keep in mind fine and small important topic indian weapon system we have an organization called as drdo defense research development organization under drdo there are different branches department they take care about the laboratory the budget etc etc okay and here india government in 1970s they started a project called as project devil okay they started a project called as project devil so uh, this project devil led to lot of missiles and now here we have missiles like prithvi 1 prithvi 2 prithvi 3 like this we have so today we are using this prithvi 1 in indian army prithvi 2 in indian air force and prithvi 3 in indian navy but we are using in a different name okay in uh, prithvi 3 in indian navy it is called as dhanush okay prithvi 2 in indian air force it is called as pradyumna okay pradyumna and prithvi 1 is as it is now there is one more missile in india that is pinaka system okay pinaka system what is the meaning of this pinaka system okay imagine imagine this is the uh, vehicle okay and here you might have seen it will be like this correct and inside this there will be rockets okay and we can fire rockets from here so this missiles this kind of missiles is called as what pinaka missiles so what has happened prithvi is surface to surface and pinaka is also surface to surface but it is mobile it i can move this anywhere so the indian army in future they are going to take prithvi plus this pinaka okay prithvi plus this pinaka they will together call it as prahar so prithvi will not be used in future pinaka will not be used in future both combine together they will be calling as what prahar missile and they are going to use it okay now this missile system drdo has two work okay drdo it has two system that is weapon and then uh, missiles okay missiles now in missile there are two types ballistic missile and cruise missile now what is meant by ballistic missile it will be working in the terms of the gravitation force okay i will be launching it from one point it will go and fall from other point with a particular trajectory this is a parabolic trajectory okay but cruise missile what happens if i launch this missile it can maneuver to the ground lever and it can go and attack the target if there is an obstacle it can change its direction it can go and attack the target so this is called as cruise missile okay now in ballistic missile you have different types okay like mid range missile small range missile okay icbm is also there okay intercontinental ballistic missile now you go and check prithvi okay then you have agni okay then you have akash okay then you have nag these are the missiles now nag is an anti tank missile okay anti tank missile this is a kind of fire and forget you fire it and forget it it will go and attack the target nag missile now if the same nag if i take it in a helicopter okay imagine if this is a helicopter okay suppose if i am keeping this missile nag here okay and here this is ground and this is the target okay this is the target the distance is very large so i can move this helicopter and if this nag if i fire from air or helicopter this is heli means helicopter and this na that is nag so this missile will be called as helina what is that helina understood so if nag which is anti tank missile if i take it from helicopter it will be helina then there is one more missile called as prospina okay prospina this is also one more missile that india uh, indian army they use okay then agni we have varieties agni 1 2 3 4 5 this 5 it has the range of 5000 km so i call this as icbm 
that is intercontinental ballistic missile okay so this is one kind of missile system used by the indian army next you have a missile called as brahmos mos means moscow is a river in russia and brahm means brahmaputra in india so russia and india jointly they are manufacturing this and we are using this in all three variant army navy air force land air under water okay land air and under water so this is what our target is we are going we are doing this much okay navy uh, then we have any other missiles uh, we have helena prospina is discussed dhanush brahmos is discussed okay so these are some kind of missile and this uh, prospina and uh, this missiles are called as uh, cruise missile cruise missile okay remember this fine then you have types of ships they haven't asked till now in afcat they don't ask about navy ships and all but there are two types of ship, uh, ships here surface and submersible in surface you have frigates destroyer corvettes aircraft carriers in submarine you have diesel electric diesel gener uh, engine and nuclear fission engine okay these two things you have okay fine so in aircraft carrier you have arihant sorry you, uh, vikrant okay vikrant okay all these missiles they, we have next when it comes to helicopters okay when it comes to aeroplane okay these are two types that is fixed wings and rotatory wing okay now in fixed wing there are varieties attack we have okay transport we have okay like this we have now rotatory we have attack and transport now in this attack we have foreign made and the indian made now in foreign you have american for example apache apache is a helicopter it is an attack helicopter but foreign right then we have other helicopters like uh, uh, you know what that mi17 correct mi17 which had a crash correct in ut so this is a transport helicopter by the uh, you know a rotatory wing helicopter like that you need to remember then here attack helicopter sukhoi 30 mig 27 mig 21 these are all attack fixed wing uh, jet aircraft then transport we have c 130j okay c 130j then we have avax one system we have so these are all types of aeroplane they don't ask but still you have to keep in mind what expected from military related ranks they may ask you okay commands they may ask you how many commands we have where is the training command something like this they will ask you and missiles possible is there possibilities there about the missile and military exercises may be okay just go with garud garud military exercise is between india and france just remember this air force military and uh, air force exercises india and france just remember this next what is the motto of indian air force hmm. tell me now Nabha, sparsham deeptam touch the sky with glory now in option suppose if this is given in english hmm, what you will do and if they have given something else b c d nabas parsham diptam nabas parsham adiptam if they give like this what you will do that time you cannot say i am a south indian uh, this is uh, some language politics you are trying indian air force you should know and what language is this nabas parsham diptam yeah hindi or sanskrit? sanskrit half of south indians they will say this is hindi okay uh, south indians they will see vande mataram is a bengali language okay and if i go to north if i start speaking in malayalam tamil ah yeah madrasi if i take, if i speak malayalam they will feel he is uh, is a tamil okay if i speak in telugu that time also is tamil okay got it suppose if i go and ask in north pushpa movie patrigi have you seen pushpa movie yes yes very beautiful tamil movie you know allu arjun that is what indians are okay fine any doubt you have anything i have left anything i have left nothing Chalo, fine then we'll see tomorrow then okay